Amen. Amen. Oh, can I just, this morning, I don't want to preach. I mean, I've really been preaching, you know me. Blah, blah, blah. I lie a little bit. <laughs> it's, not, it's really 10 o'clock. It's an hour already gone like this. Anyway, I just want to give you a couple of scriptures this morning. Can I do it? Can I just preach a couple of scriptures? Can I do it to encourage you this morning? I don't want to get into heavy doctrines or teachings and whatever. I just feel I want to give you some scriptures that maybe you need this morning, okay? I'll go to Matthew eleven twenty eight. I'll start with Matthew eleven twenty eight. How's that? New King James version of I'm just seeing I'm sticking with the new Jim King Jim the new King James version of here this morning of okay? So we'll stick with that. It says here, Come to me, Jesus is saying, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your soul, not your spirit, your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Simple, just what it says. It says, God says, just come. You that is overworked or stuck in law and whatever, you try to make it yourself, it says, come on. I want to give you rest. The Bible says in Hebrews that faith is a rest. In other words, what he is saying is that you need to say, Lord, I trust you. So because I trust you, I want to rest. You see, I'm not saying we sit back and do nothing. But sometimes we work so hard and we stress so much that we don't rest. If you don't rest, if you don't have peace, you can't have faith. And he is saying, come on. You're heavy laden. Now come to me and I will give you rest. Now people say, well, what do you mean? I mean, I said simple. Just decide, I'm not going to work myself up. In other words, a simple example, you drive in your car and here comes a taxi that we all love. <laughs> I'm speaking faith. <laughs> you know? And you make sure, oh, Lord, I just bless them. Let they come to the knowledge of the truth. In here you want but I'm not going to, because what happens is, I call them devil's children. They want to distract you, and they want to make you upset. You know what I'm saying? But you make a choice, Lord, no. I will rest in what your word says and what your truth says. Do you hear what I'm saying? You know, because if you lose your peace, if you lose your rest, you're out of faith. You're out of control. Okay? And then it will not produce anything. The Bible says in James that the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. In other words, if you lose yourself, I'm going to lose my head now. I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to just give you a piece of my... You just... What did you produce? Nonsense. It just produced more anger. I'm going to show you, and that person shows back again, back and forth, like a tennis match. And it becomes worse a situation. Jesus says, no, man, just come to me. Don't run to this oak or that oak. Come to me. Now, simple example, it says, you know what? I gave people advice sometimes. I said, people are running around every day, every day. I said, you know what? Now, I'm busy at the job. I'm busy at this. My business. I said, you know what? Tomorrow, take off and do nothing. Watch TV. How can I do that? I said, you need to rest. You have no understanding how to be at peace. You think if you stop this thing, if you don't do anything, the whole world's going to fall apart. I've got news for you. It won't. It won't. And that's what I'm trying to say to people. Chill. Yeah, but you know, I need to get... I said, chill. Take tomorrow off. Then you can sit back, relax, and see God. Read your Bible, watch TV, chill. And play with the kids, play with the dogs, whatever, and watch a movie. Just chill. And then you go back, refresh, rest, and then you can see it from a better perspective. Simple stuff. 1 Peter 5, verse 6. 1 Peter 5, verse 6. Well known scripture, but I'll give it to you. 1, 1 Peter 5, verse 6. It says, Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. In other words, what I'm saying is this, 
you know, and it says here, so I forget the other bit, it says, so if you cast all your cares upon Him, because He takes care of you. That's the next verse. In other words, this is humble yourself, you know, and then He will exalt you in due time. You see, don't have a prideful, boastful attitude or be impatient with God. If it doesn't come through now, it never will come through. Because we live in a world of instant coffee. Everything is instant gratification. Fast cars. I mean, <laughs> I mean, fast what I liked. <laughs> but, you know, we are impatient people. The robot, it goes green. You just want to put your foot on the petrol, the guy the back. Wee, 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 wee. It's not even a half a second. Wee, 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 wee. Dude, Joel. <laughs> you know, that's it. You know, so you have this stuff that we're so impatient. And what we do is we mess ourselves up because we say, I don't have patience, I don't have patience. And you think it's a good thing to say that. It's bad because you're causing more of your demise. I say to people, I'm one of the most patient person. I have so much self-control. The Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is, is patience. So now you're speaking opposite to what is in your spirit. Not good. I'm very patient. Thank you very much. I want to be impatient, but I'm patient. Okay? Because it will cost you, and he will exalt you due to time. Also, casting all your cares upon him. Now, it was in a time of humility and stuff, you're saying, Lord, I'm giving it to you. That's why, unfortunately, I say to people, you have to come to a place where no bank, no person, no doctor, nothing can help you but God. Because you've been running around so much trying to sort out everything by yourself, and it's not working for you. And I say, unfortunately, uh, um, we have to get into a space where God not, doesn't want us to be. And many people get into a place of being hospitalized. And when they lay on their back, they're looking up for the first time. Oh, Jesus. That's not what God wants. Many times we're running around, running around, till they come to take away your car, your house. Or maybe come to a place where you maybe want to lose your kids. You know, that space. And then you say, oh, okay, I'll give it to you. Why do you have to come to that point? Why does it have to come to that point? It doesn't have to. Give every day your cares to Him. Because He loves you. He loves you. Okay? And He wants to take care of you. See, this world, okay, is not good for you. If you don't have God in it. Do you hear what I'm saying? But people have the stuff in this world without God. And that's why they live in fear. They live in anxiety. They live in stuff and whatever. And they're not making it. Or they try to make it to their way. You see, God made everything good. But have God in it. Everything around, there's some stuff that's happening around also bad. But have God in your life. Cast the stuff upon Him so it will not come even close to your dwelling, the Bible says. Every day. Every day, cast your cares upon Him. Lord, I know I have to do this, do this, do this project, this I must busy with. Lord, but Lord, I cast this upon You. Lord, I'm anxious today. But Lord, this anxiety, I'm giving it to You. Lord, I need to sort this stuff out. Lord, I give to You. Lord, I have a, a problem in my life. But I give it to you today, Lord. You'll give me the wisdom and stuff. When you give it to the Lord, when you're speaking it, not just um, you speak it and really give it from your heart to the Lord, God will give you the wisdom. He'll give you the peace. He'll give you the grace for it to be sorted out. That's how it operates. That's how it is. You know? Not just a, a quick gebeki, you know, small prayer, no, 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 and you just go on the day. But I did pray. No, you didn't pray. You didn't say something so you can make me make yourself feel good and it was just a rumbling on. You didn't really believe it. I said to people, a nice Afrikaans saying is, get heartful. 
Hello? Gaat vol? Get enough. So listen, enough of me yourself, now you want. Give it to the Lord, and God will give you the wisdom to sort it out. Don't you sort it out. You just be at peace and stuff. Suddenly the idea comes, something happens. Oh, well, now I have to do that. Suddenly a phone call rings, and oh, oh yeah, that's awesome. You know? And that kind of stuff. John 16, 33. I do love this bit. John 16, verse 33. The Amplified is also quite cool. But I'll stick into the King, New King James. It says, These things I've spoken to you. It talks about the world and stuff. That in me you may have peace. Where's your peace? In Him. We live and move and have our being. Acts 17, verse 28. In the world you will have, not maybe, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So what he's saying is you're going to have challenges, but be okay. I've already overcome that challenge. Just cast your cares upon me so I can take care of you. You see, the Bible says build your house on the rock for when the storm comes. Not if, when. It's going to happen. I have trials every single day of my life. Financial, emotional, whatever. Physical. People. Situations. But how do I handle that trial tribulation? Do I go in a flat spin? Or I go, Kumbaya, me, myself, and I, all by myself. Now we understand all by myself. It's just me going through it. Nobody else goes through it. It's me, 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 me. Huh? Don't we do that? No, that's not going to help you. Gee, it's not going to help you. He says, there will be trouble, but how do I handle this challenge? How do I handle this situation? How do I handle it? Your attitude will determine your altitude. How, what's your attitude? Lord, I thank you that even this will come to pass and be okay for me. Be honest. It sucks. But it's going to be okay. Simple. You see, we think that when you come to Jesus, there's going to be nothing wrong. Now, I have news for you. Come to Jesus. A lot of things will be even worse wrong. But it's going to be okay. Because God's going to give you the wisdom and understanding how to handle things better. Do you understand? And you'll have trials, but it will not phase you. You'll have challenges, but it will not phase you. Do you hear? Because I try to explain to people, give the devil enough rope and he'll hang himself. This trials and tribulations is, is put into place not to destroy you, but to form you. It's not to destroy you, but to form you. What? Stronger character. Do you hear what I'm saying? People just want more money. I preach it. I do understand that. But do you understand if you have a, a, a business that has a billion dollar turnover a year or 500 couple. Do you understand the responsibility and the pressure? You have always have an issue. You've got a union reps against you. You've got the lawyers against you. You didn't do this probably wrong. You didn't pay this taxes. You have stuff on a regular basis. Hello? We have this whole thing, just money comes and there's nothing wrong. You, you know, the Lord showed me about Bill Gates. You know Bill Gates? He's a big, lot of money, no. You know, he, one of his biggest problems is all his money. Have you ever thought of that? One of his biggest problems is that he has so much of it. Because you can't keep it in one bank. <laughs> he has to have various banks. He actually loses money. But he gains as well. You see? There's always people against him trying to get money from him because his wealth is well known. Do you hear what I'm saying? There's a lot of stuff. Having a lot of money, you're going to have a lot of challenges. But few people, and I'm sorry to say, but very few Christians or people can handle a lot of finances. 
very few. Very few. Because I'll ask you here, how many godly people do you know is multi-millionaires? Maybe one. Huh? Maybe two. Is it 20 that you know? 15 that you know? Very few. But if I can ask you, how many people that you know that's not godly are multi-millionaires? Jeez, I know this one, I know this one, I know this one. This one, what about that? Just got to pick about you, this one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do you hear what I'm saying? We need to change that. But you're going to have challenges. Even in, 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 even in being dead free, you're going to be cha- challenged. It's going to be better, but you're going to be challenged. I love this as well. 1 John 5, from verse 1 to 5. I do love this. I mean, it's a lot of scripture I do love, but I love these scriptures today, okay? Is that okay? I love them today. <laughs> I do love them today. It says, whoever believes that Jesus is Christ is born of God. So, you believe Jesus is the Christ, and I was a belief. Not just, I'm saying, a belief. You know that really he is the Christ, the anointed one, from God. And everyone who loves him, who begot also loves him, who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep His commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. And His commandments are not burdensome. It's not the Ten Commandments. It's the love commandment. Love and love your neighbor. Not the Ten Commandments. No, love. That is the ultimate, to love. You see, it is not burdensome. It says, His commands are not burdensome for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. So that's good news, eh? Overcomes. So I cannot understand why people still preach end times. That the devil's ever going to take us. It says here that we are born of God overcomes what? The world. And the world, there's many world systems in place. And you might be in a dead system at the moment, but you're going to overcome that dead system. Amen. And this is the victim that has overcome the world. Our faith. What is your faith? That Jesus is Lord. That you know what? We have good cheer. I've overcome the world. Hello? That is it. Not you have to generate. Our faith is that Jesus is Lord. That he died for me and he rose from the dead and, I, and he has overcome the world. Although I might have trials and tribulations, he's even overcome that as well. I might have made stupid decisions, made stupid things, but Lord, I give it to you. I cast all my cares upon you. So Lord, you're going to take care of it because you've overcome the world. Amen. It's good news, people. Who is he overcomes the world, but he believes that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. This is our victory. There is our victory. There is our victory. Romans 8, 28. I wanted to do the whole Romans today, but I thought I'll spare you. <laughs> I love Romans 8. I love Romans 8. Okay, I said that a lot, but I love Romans 8. If you ever have a bad day, bad week, whatever, go read Romans 8. <laughs> I love Romans 8. I'll pick some stuff out of Romans 8. Is that okay? Do you hear me? I love saying Romans 8. <laughs> I love Romans 8. It says here, Romans 8 verse 28, it says, And who, and we know that all things work together for good for those who love God. It talks about who loves God, remember 1 John 5? It says that, To those who are the called according to His purpose. It says everything will work together for, for good. Because you love God. You want to please God, am I right? But He's already pleased with you. You want to do the right thing, you know what I'm saying? So it's going to work. They might, it's going to work. To, all things are going to work together. It might doesn't look like it. It might look, oh Lord, help a bicky, help a bicky, help a bicky, da. Whoa, help a bicky, da. Whoa, help. <laughs> huh? But it's going to work out okay. How many people always worry about this and it never comes to pass? Ridiculous. It says here, Romans 8, 31 to 32. 
What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? All things. Matthew 6 says, the Gentile seeks after these things. What things? He talks about Solomon. Solomon was a natural guy. I mean, he had, uh, I would say cars, but this goes with chariots, okay? <laughs> he had houses and stuff. Like, skip the woman part, okay, very quickly, okay? But he had all the stuff, natural stuff, gold, and whatever he says. And he also says, the Gentiles seek after these things. Nice cars, houses, wealth, all of the stuff. He says, but... Won't God give us freely all things? Didn't God grant the fullness thereof in everything? And He says, yes, yeah, now for you. Whatever we ask, we will have. Doesn't the Bible say that? I do believe sometimes you ask something stupid and God doesn't give it to you. But you can be very adamant, be very persistent that God allows it and it will cost you so you can be humbled. I said, Lord, forgive me. I do believe that. Because if you look at the scriptures, the people want to have a king. And Samuel said to him, don't have this king. This king is going to cost you. Then they had Saul. They were, we, we won. Okay, Saul. Saul was a bad king for 20-something odd years. I think 29 years or something ridiculous. Taxed them. They take sons and daughters to be put in slavery and stuff. Heavy stuff. You see, but... How I say, Lord, this is what I desire. This is what I ask for, Lord, but let your will be done in this. Is there something better than I receive it, Lord? Or direct my path. Because you direct the footsteps of a righteous man. Do you hear what I'm saying? But I, you freely gives you all things. He freely gives you all things. That's what he is. I mean, he paid the price on the cross. How much more will he not give you a nice car? Nice house, whatever. But I'm saying to people, please, let's not go through the world system to buy a house, to buy a car, to make debt, and then say it's God. Let's be patient on the Lord, and let God bless us with stuff. Do you hear what I'm saying? Romans 8, from verse 35 to 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who? Who? What man? What, what thing can separate us? Shall tribulation or distress, persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it's written, for your sake we are killed uh, all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. This is Paul speaking. This is what he went through, Paul. And he says here, yet in all these things we are more than conquered through him who loved us. You understand, you think to myself, but that's stupid. No, his attitude, I'm still a conqueror. In other words, your mind says to you, lie. Your bank account says zero. You have pain in your body. You're saying, I'm healed. You might walk like this. I'm healed. <laughs> your mind says, you're lying. Your bank account says zero. I'm blessed, I'm rich, I'm dead flee. That's what Paul said, didn't he? Paul said, we, we, with a sword, we're naked, whatever. But in all of this, we are more than conquerors. He was declaring God's promises despite his circumstances. Till it comes to pass. What did Abraham say in Hebrews, uh, Romans 4? It says, I call those things, if not as though they were. And he did not waver on God's promises. He was fully persuaded fully convinced that what God will say he will truly perform if God's word says Bible says in Hebrews 6 the last couple of verses it says, it says God's promises is an anchor for your soul your soul is your problem it goes, your spirit knows truth but your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions. You get bad news. Oh, it's the end of the world. I don't know. I'm going to get to this stuff. Blah, blah, blah. This person says, what's wrong with you? <laughs> is he 
Because your soul is your emotional state. Your soul rises to you. But God says, let's go to my promises, which is yes and it's amen. So, I'm alone. God says, no, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. It should anchor your soul. Nobody loves me. God says, I love you. Nobody cares. God says, I care. <laughs> my mother and my father don't like me. The Bible says, even if my mother and father forsake me, you'll take, take, uh, uh, take care of me and take me in. Oh. You see what God does? He anchors your soul. No, I don't know how I'm going to make this, how I'm going to whatever, whatever. God says, by nothing will ever will overtake you. Anchor for my soul. You see what the Bible does. That's why you need to get word in you. When something happens, no, nope, God said. And your flesh and your body scream. You say, what's in your spirit? Because I use, it, I use this example. Jesus in Gethsemane. You know... Gethsemane, when he was going to be persecuted, and he, uh, they're going to catch him now and betray him by Judas, or Judas betray him and catch him, whatever. Then the Bible says that, he says, he, he was perplexed in his soul, perspirating blood. And then he said, Jesus said this, Lord, I pray that this cup will pass from me. So he didn't lie. He said, it is heavy them. Wrong translation. This is heavy. I don't know if I can do this. And his soul, his emotions and everything was so much. Emotions, he says his soul, not his spirit. His soul was perplexed unto death. That his body in start perspiring blood. In other words, when you are stretching, when your soul is in a ray, you get ulcers. You conk out anxiety. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because your soul is perplexed. But then Jesus said, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Three times. So he said, Lord, let it be then according to your word. And that put him at peace and at rest. Do you hear what I'm saying? So that's what we go through many times in our lives. There's a lot of pressure on our soul side, not our spirit side. Because our spirit seems you're going crazy and the spirit says, Come on, what's wrong with you? It's going to be okay. Your mind says, No, you've got to be kidding because this is happening. They go, no, no, no. Seriously? Seriously? You see, you have this thing with your soul and your mind. But God says, Be blaming spirit, soul, and body. You see, your soul is a problem because it's your mind. So it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but by the renewing of your mind. Are you going to allow your mind to be dictated by what's happening in the world? Or are you going to say, listen, my mind will submit to the word of God and his promises, yes and amen. I have the mind of Christ. I'm not going to get stressed because the Bible says, do not, anxious, do not be anxious, do not worry, do not be anxious, do not worry. I refuse to worry. I am not worrying. I struggle to worry. Aksikkel. Praise the year. There's something I do struggle with, and that's worrying. It's time for you to get it as well. Because that's why you need to understand the Word of God. When stum, stuff comes up, Lord, you said, this is how it is. He said, but you don't understand. This is going to happen. If I don't do it, I said to people as well, I said, Johan, this is going to happen. They're going to put me in jail, and things are going to happen. I said, but we prayed about it. We believe God for it. It's going to happen. Yeah, but I said, no. A year later, whatever, so what's the problem? Is it, are you in jail still? No. I said, so? Do you hear what I'm saying? We go through trials and tribulations, and we think God is so freaking deaf. And we think we're the only one who goes through this stuff. Nobody understands how I feel. Nobody knows what I'm going through. Me, 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 me. Get over yourself. Do you hear what I'm saying? You're not the only one. There's people going through worse stuff. See how you handle this trials and tribulations. 
But you are more than a conqueror. You stand up and say, I speak against it. I don't speak about my mountain. I speak, speak to my mountain. Be cast, be removed and cast yourself into the sea. Do you hear what I'm saying? People will come against you. Your bosses, your staff, your spa, ex-spouses, <laughs> especially, <laughs> you know. But it's okay. Your bosses and stuff and traffic officers. <laughs> huh? But it's going to be okay. You see, must understand the Bible shows us this. That Paul and them paid the price. They were persecuted. They died and stuff so that we can have an inheritance today. You know that the Bible says in Hebrews, can read it? They did not even see the promises, some of them. Because they knew they had to lay down their life. But the Bible says, certainly they will not go before us. We, they paid the price as well so that we can have the promises today. That we can walk in this fullness. That we can walk too like sons and daughters of God. That truly nothing can overtake us, no matter what, when, or how. No matter how your financial condition, your physical condition, you speak God's word, you believe God's word, till that thing manifests, till that miracle has been done in your body, in your finances, in your mind, in whatever place you need it, you put it. And in that you glorify God. If it's happening now or not, you still glorify Him. Not when, uh, Lord, when is it going to happen? Lord, I thank you it's going to happen. Do you hear what I'm saying? And this is going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It is going to be so okay. Amen.